Hi everybody, it's Ruth here. So I thought I'd pop on <laughs> and do a little bit of stamping. Oh my goodness, my lighting's gone to ski with. Hold on. Um, there we go, that's better. So I've got the paper pumpkin kit with me and I wanted to have a little play with it but not use any of the consumables in the kit but just use the stamp set just to give you an idea of how versatile this kit really is she says oh my goodness where have they disappeared to? <laughs> oh i was showing somebody this set earlier should i take them out oh they're here oh my goodness i thought i was going crazy then so i did a little bit of a reveal of this kit my Facebook live this afternoon so if you want to go and see what is in this kit then do go to my Facebook page and have a look if you don't already follow me I'm artful stamping fancy that on uh, YouTube uh, Facebook so we have these beautiful stamps here and I thought it would be nice to have a play using some of the new ink colors and find out what else can be done with this stamp set because it is so pretty so if you think you've got friends that might enjoy this please share this out i always do appreciate having new new visitors to my channel it's always nice to interact with folks so do share out um right so we have a beautiful couple of bird stamps here and it'd be really nice to see what what these could look like on a card got some really pretty blossoms there and some great sentiments so I'm thinking um, kind of a one sheet wonder but you but cut it down into smaller pieces so usually I would cut this size cardstock into perhaps um, four but I'm thinking let's get eight maybe out of this and we'll think about where we're going to put put the birds on there uh, and again let's yeah use up some of these new colours because they're so pretty so let's have a go with this blossom I'm imagining maybe a row of blossom across there and then a row I know what I know exactly what I'm going to do now I'm going to do blossom there and there and then turn it round so that I don't end up with blossom in the sky. It will all make sense, I promise. Let's just carry on watching for a moment. Uh, if, you, if you want to skip ahead, please feel free to skip ahead. Right, so this is a live video, and um, I hope you guys are getting accustomed to these type of videos. It means then that if you would like to, if you're watching this on the replay and you'd like to skip ahead, you can do that. Right, so these are photopolymer stamps. So sometimes it's helpful to put a stamping mat behind the work just to help with the way that the ink works onto the card it just gives it a little bit of um, help because it has a bit of give the rubber stamps have that give because they have a foam pad on them whereas photopolymer ones don't so that's why we recommend using a pad underneath and once you get used to, you know, having one, it's it's really easy. And it really does make a little difference. These are very pretty. Look at that. That is so nice. Now the other thing I discovered a, a little while ago was that these mats could quite easily cleaned because sometimes I forget to protect it. And um, I got a load of ink one the other day and I just wiped it with water and it was absolutely fine so my little tip don't worry if you do get ink on them they are washable so I'm sorry I'll try and hurry this stage on a little bit so if you are watching live do say hello thank you for joining me it's a little late here in the UK but I was doing some work on some of my videos and sorting out YouTube stuff and then 
I've also been writing a, the address labels for my catalogues to go out to my customers and I thought oh I really do want to create some cards using hewing colours to show them off what better way to do that but with a paper pumpkin kit so I thought I'd just come on here and be a bit sociable and share with you what I'm doing because it's, uh, it's kind of a fun thing to do while I'm creating at my desk to actually have people watching and, and joining in and even if folks do want to fast forward it on the replay that's absolutely fine so we've got seaside spray here and I thought that would be fun to literally stamp some seaside spray almost like they're getting little splotches of spray onto these lovely blossoms here like they've got raindrops and dewdrops hanging on them and that just adds a little bit more texture to it right you know what I'm going to get up for a second and switch my above light off because I think it does make a difference there we go it doesn't cast so much of a shadow So what's been, what, they, what has everyone been up to today? It's still half term here in Wales, so the children are off school. So I had a friend come round with her kids this morning, and then we, um, myself and my daughter and another young lady, we went off to watch Aladdin, which was really good fun, the live action one. And I've got to say, Will Smith was fantastic. And gave a very very good performance all right so here is a lovely bird I'm just gonna have these birds flying across it's nice how you can kind of slightly tilt them and then there's this one here as well I've well, just got to look at that one see which way it's meant to be flying. Just try to find a scrap piece of paper just to have a look at what how this bird is. So kind of more of an upright bird if that makes sense. Um like he's yeah I'm not sure whether I do want to use him actually because he's oh no maybe there there we go I'll have to figure out quite what direction he's meant to be good flying in really go there there we go oops just trying to uh see if there's a way of watching myself on here so I don't have to keep looking up to see if you're commenting there we go. all right so let's turn this around and do some more birds I don't know if I've done that a little bit too high actually do this one a bit lower down Right, I like those. And now let's have a look what other stamps we have here. We've got these feathers. I'm not sure if feathers are gonna kind of go with this particular design. So I'm wondering whether so we've just got terracotta tile to use now. I think I'm gonna cut this up and then stamp the sentiments. And by cutting it up now it means that 
so I can see exactly where to place the sentiment. I've just got to find my trimmer. And because I've switched my main light off, <laughs> I find it rather difficult. Well, it could be that my husband has borrowed my trimmer, which he does do from time to time. So I've stamped it rather high, haven't I? So I think I'm just going to bring that to about there. So I'm going to cut that at 10 centimetres. Normally I'd cut it at 10 and a half, but I'm going to just bring that down. Hi Gloria, nice to see you. Thank you for joining. And then I think I'm going to cut this at um, ooh, just under six centimetres. Do I want to do that or do I want to do it under more? I'll try that at six. I know it means I'm chopping some wings off. But I can always go in and stump more, can't I? No, I wonder whether I should have done the birds afterwards as well. Never mind, one learns from these mistakes. There we go. Oops, yes, I'm chopping that head off there, never mind. Hi from Florida. Oh, lovely to see you. Oh, thank you, Gloria. Lovely to have your company. Right, so if you want to attempt this at home, I would recommend that you do the birds afterwards if you don't want, if you don't like chopped heads, put it that way. Uh, maybe, yeah, do this in a slightly different way. So, is this the first time you've caught me live, Gloria, or have you come on before onto a live? Just add some more birds. No, yeah, that's the great thing about stamping, you can do that. There we go. Oh, you have come on before. Oh, okay. Sorry, I've, if I haven't remembered you from before. I think that one's all right. It's got oh, there's one at least one whole one on that one. I think that one's okay as well because I must leave space for sentiments, mustn't I? Right, so I have a few there. So I've got some slightly longer than others. I'm just going to pop the stumps over to the side for a second, and then we're going to have a look at these beautiful sentiments and see what's going to fit in. So I've got hugs there for you. Um, thank you. Dear friend. I think, oh hello is quite nice actually. Hello. Because I'm going to be sending these to my customers. And um, right. I think there's a nice little hello there. Oh, a little slightly ski with, but I think it's in keeping with the whole feel of the. It's very kind of shabby chic looking. There we go. Hello. Hello. I think about all the different ways I can say hello. <laughs> oh, now that one, I think I'll put something different there because I haven't really got the space for it on there. Let's try this one here. Hello. Uh, no. Mm, no. Mm, maybe there. Oh, I didn't ink up properly on that one. Let's try that 
try. Oh, not really got space on it for there. There we go. Right, so I've got a few hellos. And I want to swap it out. I think for the for you. So you're getting quite an extensive stamp set in this kit. The kit costs £20, but this stamp set alone I think is worth about 15 What you're getting on here is just loads, absolutely loads. Oh, I can see a moth flying around in my craft room. Oh, you tinker, come here. Hopefully he'll come back and I'll squish him. Because um, I do have a problem with moths. And occasionally I get out a garment and I go, oh, the moths have been here. So I'm afraid they don't survive long in here. Go for you. I love this font. So classic. Right, there we go. Now I wanted to show off to you the new cleaning uh, pad from Stampin' Up. Um, it's going to be available in the new catalogue. And I'm, so I'm just popping these stamps back onto the block so that I can clean them all in one go. And it is recommended that you use it straight away on your photopolymer stamps to prevent staining apparently so you kind of squish the pad like that and then it is also just stamp that off yeah you should really stamp off the excess ink and then you immediately clean off the uh, residue with some water so I actually just have a rag here on the side and I'm just going to spray now these stamps with water and um, it does really work. It does prevent the photopolymer stamps from being as stained as they have got in the past because some people really don't like, especially when you use like dark purples and pinks and things, um, we are finding that the, it, I mean it's the same for, you know, most acrylic and, and photopolymer stamps they do um, get stained but this new stamp cleaning pad seems to be doing the absolute business for it hi Cindy lovely to see you from uh, uh, blah, 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 Everett where oh now WA what's that where um, hold on hold on where no I can't figure it out I'm, I'm not so great on my some of my American states just yet. Wyo I want to say Wyoming, but that might not be right. You can correct me, Cindy. Right, so that's the stamps cleaned. Now the one ink pad that we don't have just yet, because Stampin' Up! are just uh, sorting out, the finalising the formulation of it, because they had some issues, some demonstrators who got their pads early realised that they were foaming slightly. So Stampin' Up! have take, gone back to the drawing board and they're resorting out uh, the formulation for that ink pad. So at the moment we have um, available to us the Pretty Peacock Terracotta Tile Seaside Spray and Rococo Rose uh, ink pads. Now in Europe there are some issues to do with import importation uh, that Stampin' Up! are working terribly, terribly hard to sort of sort it out. So um, we just have to be a little bit patient there on that one. Okay, so I've cut these down and I've re just realised I actually need to cut these down a little bit further if I'm going to make this work. To map. I want to layer these onto the purple. So, so that means I've used every single colour, you see. So um, Cindy says, I'm so glad I found you and your sister. Oh, thank you. So you watch Esther as well. Brilliant. Yeah, she she does some cracking videos. I, um, she did a really good one. She she do her, released her bokeh technique one today. And then uh, the other day she released the one that she did. Actually, funny enough, we both made cards for our parents' wedding anniversary. 
Oh, that's that moth is flying around again. And um, she's just released that on her video channel. So if you want to go and watch her, do do that. Oh, I'm determined to get this moth. Right. I'm, cut, I'm cutting just half a centimetre off these because, so that is down now to ten and a half because I want to cut this at eleven. I'm going to cut this at and 6.4 centimetres. So that works out about two and a half inches, ladies in America. Because I want to layer, I want to layer that onto there, you see. Oop, no, not that, that one. That one. And that one. So I'm just going to take half a centimetre off that one. My son and my husband are watching some zombie programme at the moment, so if you can hear that, I apologise. <laughs> I think it's the they like the Walking Dead series. I think my husband's quite chuffed now. My son is old enough to watch it with him. It's not something I'd recommend for young children. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Chop that bit off that. So I can map that one onto there. So I am left with this little sliver here, and I'm wondering whether to, if I can cut that, no, forget it. Nope, 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 not even going to try it. Right, so I'm going to cut some of these down. I've already cut those two down. I'll cut these down a tad. Right, where's the other... What's my sister's name? Her name is Esther, and her um, YouTube channel is Stampin' Star Creations. Stampin' Star Creations. So she's a Stampin' Up! demonstrator as well. Um, she's... I'm in mid-Wales, and she's in sort of the west of England. Near People generally know where Bath is, so she's about an hour from Bath, or 45 minutes from Bath that part of the country, very beautiful part of the world. I think they have the Jane Austen Festival in Bath. If you like Jane Austen. I watched Austen Land the other day, that was quite fun. No, I'm I'm Ruth and Esther is Stampin' Star Creations. I'm Ruth is Artful Stampin', Esther is Stampin' Star Creations. Right, so now I'm going to make some very vanilla cardstock. And just make some card bases. And I like the idea of sticking these on here, but then having the bird sort of fly off the page, as it were. So now I'm thinking about it because, you know, this is all keeping it real type stuff. Um, I've just thought of an idea of what I could have done. So I'm going to show you what I could have done to make this a little bit more interesting. I'm just going to cut a couple of bases here. So I'm just scoring and cutting. So this is rather te the tedious bit. I should have done this earlier, really. But I just wanted to hop on here before it got too late. 
So for those of you in the UK um, and you're one of my customers, do check out the retiring rack or the retiring list section on the shop because Stamp Stampin' Up! have added some reduced items or they've uh, reduced some of the retiring items and um, that went live this evening and so you might be able to grab yourself some of the last minute bargains as well as possibly add a paper pumpkin to your basket because it is fabulous lots of demonstrators here in the UK are hoping that paper pumpkin is going to come come to the UK right so my idea is I've just realized you see if I just stamped the flowers and the splotches and left the birds I could have then placed that onto there stamp the birds and it would look like the birds were flying off wouldn't it <gasps> see I have these ideas after the fact but what if I do this I can always move it can't I so I'm going to try it yes her blog is Stampin Star Creations she's Stampin Star Creations on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube Whereas I'm Artful Stamping on all platforms. Da, 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 da. Right, I'm just going to pop that there like that. And then re-ink my birdie. And then I'm going to hover it over the top like that. I'm going to remove the card and pop that down like that. And it kind of looks like it's flying off, doesn't it? That looks quite cool, doesn't it? And you see, I think that one went there, didn't it? So, if I grab, I know what, if I put that, that bird on that block, and that one on that one, just ink that up. So I'm gonna just align that back up there, like that. Just hot, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's not exact, because, you know, as I said, we're doing this after the fact. So I'm just gonna lift that away pop that down see ta -da! it is it's all an adventure you're quite right Cindy there we go look it looks like the birds are flying off you see I'm very tempted now to have a little bird there like that there we go that works, I think. Right, I'm going to move that to the side. I'm going to glue all this all later. Let's try another one. Let's see if we can make this work. What about this one here? So I've got hello. Hello. Right, so now I've got to figure out which stamp it was. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. Hello from Texas. Welcome. Texan girl. Are you born and bred Texan or are you new to the area or right so I'm just gonna hover that there for a second. I'm, just, I'm keeping hold of it then I'm just gonna go whoop, move it and stamp. There we go and then I'm wondering if we could have, look, because now I can do this, if I could firm push down and then bring that back in, pop that on there, ta -da! how cool is that? Generational text then. So you You've been there a while then, girl. Well, you and your family have anyway. Is that what you mean? Right, let's have another. It's quite exciting. I'm enjoying this. Just get these the right way round. That's not quite right. 
So I always end up talking about food often on these live things. So I sometimes do paris Periscope and uh, it all gets very chatty on Periscope. So it's really fun to come on here and do, be able to do YouTube lives now because this is, I don't know, how long has YouTube been doing this live facility? Um, sorry, just drinking my tea. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I usually end up talking about food. So tell me what your your best dish is then. Everyone watching, what what are you good at cooking? Right, let's just get this a little bit straighter. About there, I think. Spaghetti and meat sauce. Surely that's not traditionally Texan. I appreciate that might be your best dish, Rebecca, but oh my goodness, is that a Texan speciality? So is that an Italian influence in there then? Pasta. So Gloria says pasta as well with sausage and peppers and onions. Wow, okay. I thought you were going to say something like corn grits or... I don't know. Chicken wings? guys like chicken wings? Right, that's that one, that's that one. Waiting. No Italian in me. <laughs> it's amazing how Italian food has just like gone across the world, hasn't it? And everybody loves Italian food. Now I've got to figure out, is that, is that that one? I think it is, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so has anyone done this technique before where you, you kind of stamp a whole page and then you cut out elements and then you remount it like this? Of English fish and chips. Have you ever been to the UK? Anyone been to the UK? Have you got places that serve English fish and chips? Or British fish and chips rather? We serve it with something called mushy peas. And I, for years and years, I wouldn't eat them because I didn't think I liked it. And then a friend of mine was having some with her fish and chips. So I said, oh, please, can I try some? Anyway, I decided I really did like, like it. it. If you like dal, it's sort of the consistency of dal, really. And... Um, But in a pea. Yeah, and it is quite nice. There we go. Right. I've got one more to do before we start gluing. Um, yeah, and then so, and then my son loves to eat whenever we have fish and, or sometimes I won't always have fish and chips from the chip shop I'll just order that just go and get the chips but my one of my sons says oh please can we have curry sauce and it is a absolute bastardized version of curry sauce it's not <laughs> it's not like proper curry at all it's like a British 
like ready mix curry <laughs> it's um um quite gloopy they put quite a bit of cornstarch in it um but it just has a very it's very it's very like associated with chip shops in the uk this curry sauce and it will even have like um, sultanas in it and um yeah anyway my son really likes it so we always have to have curry sauce with with our chips oh i forgot i've got to take this off haven't i Lining that up to then do it's gonna do that there. There we go. Right, so now oh the malt vinegar, yes. The malt vinegar is good. It is kind of what makes makes the flavour. I do love salt and vinegar though together. I do like salt and vinegar crisps as well. Clean mouth. I'm going to clean these off in a minute. I'm just making sure that they don't stain. Because I'm actually sending this kit to a friend of mine who's in hospital at the moment because I thought it'd be really fun for them to have a go with it. So, um, right. Glue. Now we could do a combination of glue and dimensionals. Um, so, oh, I did have some glue here now in a previous very quick Facebook live about a week ago I was showing you how to use to recycle card to create dimensions so I think I might do that now because I have got a pile of card that I can use for this I just want to show you how easy it is to do that Oh, yes, Indy. Yes, please do. Yeah, a few people get me and Esther modelled up. It's okay. Don't worry about it. We're not offended at all. Um, right, so let's see what I've got. Look, I'm just reaching behind me. I've got bits of card, you see, that I always keep. I don't like to throw them away for projects. And so... Um, check so that was six centimeters now this stuff is really quite thick so it's the blade is not going to cut through it but it will score enough i hope to do this so it might even be able to do a turn it over and do a pass down down it there we go see that's cool do that and do that. Yeah, if you ever come to the UK, I mean, I live in Mid Wales, and it's a really be beautiful part of the UK. If you like hills and you know, scenery and sheep and that kind of stuff, then, um, um, yeah, go for it. Yeah, do look us up. Right. And Esther lives in a very nice part of the world as well. Okay, so I'm just going to cut that down to about there. Hoping to get two bits out of this. Oh, I, oh, I don't have to do it both sides. Oh, okay. So, just do that. And it's like grey board. It's just mushed up board stuff. I don't know, you know, it's just packaging. A Welsh corgi. Oh. What corgis do the Queen, does the Queen have?
Actually, the, if I tell you a funny story, the Queen actually came to visit my town a few years ago. Um, I'm trying to think how long ago it was. Probably about seven or eight years ago, actually. And um, so she arrived on her special train at our train station. And one of my friends brought, came over. She doesn't live in this town, but in a, in a neighbouring town. And um, she brought her children over to try and get a glimpse of the Queen, you know. And they didn't realise, but near them was a lady with a little corgi. And of course the Queen cannot resist a corgi and stopped to chat to this lady, which was right beside my friend's children. So in the pictures of the Queen coming to Welshpool, stopping to chat to this corgi, are, are pictures of my friend's little French children. So, um, oh, and she did look absolutely beautiful the day she visited. She'd been visiting um, Carnarvon Castle the day before. So um, she was doing a bit of a Welsh tour. And now when the Queen comes to visit any town, you don't know literally like probably less than a week before she visits because they have because of security. So you don't it's not like like it plans months and months in advance and you know about it. It's literally I mean the maybe the town council might know about it, but as the public we don't know until you know a few days before she comes. Um and then there's obviously loads of security checks and things. Anyway, so the day before she was in Carnarvon Castle and the now I'm I love fashion I love clothes and I, I do like seeing what the Queen wears because she, you know she has lovely taste and I think she wore a pink the day before and it was a really beautiful outfit however for me I didn't think it suited her in particular it isn't like wasn't the best colour on her but the day that she came to visit my town she wore this beautiful blue and it it, she just looks so gorgeous in it. Um, she really did look quite regal. Um, so I was glad that she chose the blue to my, come to my town because I think she looked better in it. Anyway, that's just an aside. And if you're interested in like things like the clothes that she wears and, and bro brooches that she wears, it is really interesting to look at all the different brooches that she's ever worn and um, the history behind them and the different days that she wears them. And she's usually quite sensitive, like if it's a particular holiday or um, occasion, she'll often match her brooches to the occasion and she always wears always always wears a brooch of some sort um, and they usually have been like gifted to her from other nations and things like that so it's quite interesting to to kind of look behind it right so as you can see I'm just um, adding these cardboard bits now I don't know if you guys in America probably don't realize but we have been having issues with our imports our yams and so Stampin' Up have got shipments of various anything like the adhesives like Tombow and and um, dimensionals and powders and inks are all being has been stuck in customs awaiting new um, there's been some new regulations to do with toxicity and things like that and they need to be relabeled so we are waiting on shipments to come through so it's it's become a little bit tricky here getting hold of certain things so us demonstrators are trying to you know stay positive and kind of focus on the things that are available to us at the moment uh, so for example we cannot order any reinkers of the new in colors just yet we have to wait on those so um yeah, but it kind of, you know, it sobers us, sobers us and just reminds us actually, you know, there are more important things in the world to be worrying about. And um, I do feel for though for the demonstrators where they really are, this is their business. It's This is um, not really a full time thing for me. I, I enjoy doing it and I do do classes, but it's not my main source of income. Um, so 
for me it's not so such a big issue but for those demonstrators who have made stamping up their kind of main um, source of income it's been really hard on them um, so I do really feel for them at the moment okay Cindy nice to see you thank you for joining Okay, so well, thank you for sticking with me. As you can see, there's nine of you still watching. It's very sweet of you. This is quite tedious, this bit. It's just me sticking stuff down. But um, I, I really like how these have turned out. And these are going to be going with my catalogues to my online customers. Um, I don't have lots, but I, I try and make sure that they get the catalogue. And um, I do appreciate each of their custom so thank you if you have shopped with me in the last year or so I really do appreciate it hi Bev nice to see you right so how many have I got left three more to go So if you've just joined me, I'm, I'm not using dimensionals, I'm just using recycling some card to create um, dimension on these cards. Yeah, I think one of the issues that some people have with, especially with the Tombow, is because it's latex based. I actually have a friend whose daughter has got a severe latex allergy and it only just occurred to me recently that... Um, Tombow would be a nightmare for her. She wouldn't be able to use it. So, um, yeah, for people who have latex allergies, they have to be you know, very careful. And as demonstrators, we have to be mindful of not causing issues for people. Just making sure that stood up okay <laughs> that it wasn't too heavy no that's fine it actually gives it a nice bit of weight by putting that card behind it just going to make sure these are so we've done a combination of one sheet wonder and also stamping the design off and I have done this type of thing many many times before when creating multiple cards especially for swaps um, but it works also for you know if you're needing to make a lot of cards but you want that you know that very handmade element so a very crafted element to part of the card so it means that you can you know really put some detail into your one sheet wonder cut it up then then you know have a lesser detail around the, around the outside um, you know I've, I have done that quite a few times now it also you know by doing it this way it means that the, the part that you have spent time on you know, you're you're kind of treating it specially by having space around it for people to focus in on on that main, you know, um, area. Oh, thank you, R Rhonda. Oh, how did I not? I must have stamped that without stamping on there. Oh well. 
just seeing a little bit of chipboard creeping out there. There we go. That bird's wing got away there. So are there any other bits and pieces that you guys, any tips you can give me of how to use your scraps? Well, this is not even scraps, this is like what you would normally throw away. This is uh, more for construction, this stuff really. Oh, and for those of you who are watching, do do you have you guys watched my like making cards from scraps videos? What you, um, I wouldn't mind some feedback on those because um, they seem to do well on my channel, and I don't know if it's worth doing a few more of those. So. So that's six cards made. Um, I have got two ones here to make another two. So that's eight cards made from that one sheet wonder. And using all the colours in the um, the new the new colours, apart from the ink of Purple Posy, but I've used the card of Purple Posy to actually make the frame. And also the it's from the stamp set that's available in the paper pumpkin kit so um great yeah really beautiful to read this um yeah more scraps videos please thank you amazing me and rebecca says i use that borrow technique from you as swaps for on stage okay so this this technique great yeah it is fabulous isn't it because it just means that it's very personal and and beautiful but yet you know i mean oh goodness I don't know how many swaps you made for on stage but I made quite a few so um, it can get quite you know busy tedious making lots and lots um, what, I was gonna do something else just then oh right I want to make some kind of sampler using um, the new colors or actually what I might do is make a little almost like a little taggy book using the new colours. Um, one, two, three, maybe I'll have them all. Let's have a look. I've got the blue one, the purple one, the, that one. I just need to grab the peacock. And what I like to do is I have here, I don't know if I've ever shown you this, but I have, I've got cling film covering it over, but I have in here punched out circles. So if anyone needs a um, little sampler of all the coloured card, I have them here ready to go. So I do need to restock, I need to do new in colour ones. So, let me just check what size punch I used. I can send these with my new my catalogues, can't I? Right, so is it the one and a quarter or is it the one and a half? That's what I need to figure out. Just grab one of these. Oh, oh one and I must be one, the one and three eighths then. And the one and three eighths one is just about to retire. Yeah. The, I've had this for a very, very, very long time. Oh my. It's probably one of the earliest ones that I purchased. <clears throat> I love my circle punches. I think if I was to ever do a must-have video, it would be get some circle punches. 
so I'm now just wittering. I don't know if it's worth me flicking my camera around so you can actually see me. Or shall I go off now? Because all I'm going to do is cut circles. <laughs> We can have a little chat. Now, can I flip my camera around? Oh, I can. Right, then you'll get to see how messy my desk is. is not great like that. Hello everybody. I don't often get to do this on YouTube. I do this more on Periscope but I don't tend to do it on YouTube more. I'm sorry about that lighting issue there. I think it's because I've got a slight crack in my um, my camera glass so it's a bit dodgy. But anyway, hello. <laughs> this is me. Um, so all I'm going to do is cut up circles from here. They will go into my little box of things. <clears throat> they are very cute. We'll try this technique sometime. Oh, thank you. You like cards. That's good. So I did a YouTube live on Monday. I called it Will It Jelly Plate? And if you haven't seen it, I've just done a version of that video that's... Um, I've kind of like I downloaded it off YouTube and then edited it and then done a voiceover onto it so that it's a bit easier to watch. So um, can you hear the spring in that? That's how old it is. <laughs> but it's still going. It's a very faithful punch. It needs a bit of oiling, I think. A bit of spray or something. A bit of WD forty. And it doesn't like it if you punch out near the edge. But never mind. Right, so if you guys haven't got any other questions, I think I'm going to go off because this is otherwise going to get rather boring for you to be watching me doing this. But yeah, I'm glad to have inspired some of you. Especially with the One Sheet Wonders. I think a few of you enjoy those. So that's fun. Take care, guys. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to go now because this is, yeah it'll be boring for you to watch me doing this but um, I hope to catch you again soon thank you for watching